now we wanted to take a look at the idea of the fundamental theorem of algebra and how we can apply that. Uh, so let's take a look at this example here in section 3.4, page 333, number 14. Let's find all zeros of P and rewrite P as the product of linear factors. That's what the fundamental theorem of algebra allows us to do, to take any nth degree polynomial function and then write it as a sequence of n linear factors. In this case, uh, p of x is equal to 4x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 13x squared minus 12x plus 3. Well, let's go ahead and graph this so we can, so we can get an idea of what the uh, function looks like first. Uh, if I hit the y equals key, you can see I, I went ahead and entered the function. Uh, and then if I hit the window uh, button here just to the right of the y equals key, notice here I use the... Um, uh, the scale from negative 2 to 3 on the x scale, negative 5 to 20, a y scale of 5 on the y scale. So uh, I'll hit, go ahead and hit the graph key now. There's what the graph looks like. And notice here it's a fourth degree function, so it kind of looks like a parabola. It's even degree, leading coefficients positive, so it opens up. And it looks like it might just have one zero right there. Now, let me show you a way you can find out what that zero would be. I'll hit the second key and then hit the trace key to get that calculate menu. And now let me pick option two for zero. Now it says, uh, here's our function at the top. It says find a left bound. In other words, find a value that is to the left of where you think the zero might be. Well, this says uh, x equals negative one. I, I think that's a good left bound. I'll go ahead and hit the enter key. Now for the right bound, I'll just use the cursor key cursor over to the right until we get to some positive values there. And then you can see we're tracing along on our function. And let me just kind of do this slowly till we get any value that's to the right of our zero. And, well, that looks pretty good right there. We don't have to go too far. I just go ahead and hit the, the enter key there. And this says, take a guess. Well, I'll just hit the left cursor and hit the enter key. It doesn't have to be a good guess. So it calculates. And there it looks like, what does that say there? X equals 0.49999976. So it might be one half. Well, let's verify that. Let's go ahead and hit the second key and calc again. Go to one for value. And let's plug in one half for x. And notice there, it looks like one half is a zero of the function. All right, so since it's fourth degree, we only have one x-intercept. It looks like that x equals one half is a zero with multiplicity of two. All right, so in other words, P of X, our function there, is equal to X minus one half squared times some other function that's quadratic. We don't know what it is. I'll just call it Q of X. Now, I guess we could rewrite that if we wanted to. This, the, the zeros of this factor are uh, of, of X minus one half, the zeros of that are one half. Would you agree I could rewrite this as x, uh, excuse me, I could rewrite x minus 1 half as 2x minus 1 quantity squared times q of x. And then I could go ahead and square that binomial, and we could rewrite this again as 4x squared minus 4x plus 1, if we square that binomial, times q of x. So in other words, this fourth degree polynomial is equal to this quadratic here, which gave us those two re, uh, zeros of negative one half with a multiplicity of two times some other quadratic function. Now, so to find Q of X, all we have to do is to take P of X and then divide it by this quadratic we found. And we're gonna have to use long division here 
because synthetic division is used uh, to divide out linear factors. So by long division, think of what we want to do. Our divisor is 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And then uh, our uh, dividend is p of x, 4x to the fourth, minus 4x cubed, plus 13x squared, minus 12x, plus 3. So let's go ahead and start dividing here. Uh, 4x squared goes into 4x to the fourth, x squared times. Now we'll multiply x squared by each of the terms in the divisor. So we get 4x to the fourth, minus 4x cubed, plus x squared. And now let's go ahead and subtract. 4x to the fourth minus 4x to the fourth gives us zero. That's what we want. And then 4x cubed uh, minus negative 4x cubed is zero. That's what we want. And then we have 13x squared minus x squared. That gives us 12x squared. And then we'll bring down the next two terms. Remember, we're subtracting there, okay? So that's how we, we got that 12x squared. And now let's do it again. We'll see how many times does 4x squared go into 12x squared. It looks like it's going to be three times. So let's multiply three by the three terms in our divisor. So that gives us 12x squared. And then three times negative 4x gives us negative 12x. And then one times three is three. And notice there we have no remainder. That's exactly what we want. So it looks like p of x is equal to 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 times x squared plus 3. All right, so now what we have to do is to find the zeros uh, that are associated with this binomial over here, 4x plus 3. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and do that. We'll just take x squared plus 3, set that equal to 0. And so we could rewrite that then as x squared equals negative 3. And then taking the square root of both sides, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 3. But we wouldn't leave it like that. We would rewrite that as what? Plus or minus the square root of 3 times i. So there we have it. Um, it looks then that the linear factors, oh, the linear factorization, pardon me, of p is, well, let's see, it'll be p of x, and then we ha first have those repeated roots. I'll write, I'll write it as x minus 1 half times x minus 1 half, and then we have x minus the square root of 3 times i, and then our other root, x plus the square root of 3 times i. So we've taken that, we've taken that fourth degree polynomial function and rewritten it as a sequence of four linear factors. So we have um, a uh, two real roots with a multiplicity of two, and then